Hi there, Coach Sage Kande of sagerunning.com here with another training talk. Today we're gonna to talk about running form and specifically pronation or the rotation inwards of your foot on impact. Now, I've done a lot of videos on running form tutorials over the last decade, over the last 10 years. I'll link to the playlist at the end of this video as well as in the description below. I've done stuff on stride length, cadence, uh, forward lean, body position, pelvic position, all these aspects of running form and we're gonna dig into this more in these tutorial series, uh, but you could check them out. I'll archive them as well and just be leery with, you know, there's a lot of information out there on the interwebs these days with people People that are coaches uh, that may or may not have less or more experience uh, out there so just look at their credentials look at how many marathons or ultras they've run look at the people that they've coached in their experience I will say I'm not a total noob at this I have done uh, I did major, I got a Bachelor of Science in Human Factors and Ergonomics, looked out of an, a lot of anatomy and physics and applying that with biomechanics, as well as running in, working in run specialty shoe stores, fitting thousands of people for shoes, running shoes uh, in different types, all different brands, all different types of runners, from beginners to advanced runners, all any service, any distance, for uh, over three years of experience in specialty, run specialty shoe stores. So let's dig into pronation. Essentially, running pronation depends on a lot of factors. We're all different as runners, right? We all have different strengths and weaknesses from our uh, muscle strength, how our quads are built, how our feet are built specifically, the arch type, how high your arches may be, how rigid or flexible your arches may be, uh, how tall you are, how long your stride is, right? What the impact force is and uh, different aspects like that. But when we talk about pronation, we're looking at this plane, how your foot turns inward, right? It's the arch arch collapsing. So if you imagine you're landing on the outside of your pinky toe, which most people usually kind of do, don't worry if it's a, a heel strike or a, a toe foot strike, but more on that outside pinky toe is where you usually land. And then on impact, the foot rolls inward towards the big toe, right? You're rolling inwards off the ball of the foot. So if you think of it in terms of those physics, uh, that's what pronation is how much you rotate inwards, how much your arch kind of collapses to absorb the impact. Our feet naturally are great shock absorbers, especially on, on really soft surfaces. However, the type of shoe that you wear may or may not work better uh, for your stride. And some people need a lot more arch support or stability compared to other people. And you know, you could change these things through your training, through specific strength work, through balancing exercises. And it's really important that you get in the right fit of shoe and the right type of shoe for your foot and running form so that you can increase your efficiency and hopefully reduce the risk for injury. A lot of people get issues like plantar fasciitis because their arch is too rigid or uh, it's not supportive enough or they ramp up their training too fast. Uh, whereas the shoe arch support, there's different categories of shoes. And obviously I'm sponsored by Hoka Oneone. Uh, I've done a whole video actually on selecting the type of Hoka Oneone shoe for yourself. You could run in, uh, you know, different brands, but Hoka makes all different types of running shoes depending on if you're a road athlete or a trail athlete and depending on how much cushion or how much support you want. So one example, this is the Rihi from Hoka. Super lightweight, super flexible shoe, right? Uh, it's great for really dialing in that feel if you want a lightweight racing flat uh, and you know people do fast workouts on the track in it on grass cross country courses it's a great road racing shoe for 5k 10k but super flexible right this has less stability on the inside edge on the arch support edge because it's just a lightweight more of a lightweight flexible foam whereas if you have something else like the speed goat this is the hoka one one speed goat evo it's a trail shoe but because it has more material, it's more built up, it's got a Vibram outsole, uh, it's a little stiffer. It's a little stiffer in the pronation department. And because it's built up more on the inside edge, you have some more inherent stability, is what we call it, or more arch support. So yeah, it weighs a bit more, it's not as flexible, it's got great traction for the trails and mountain running, bombing down hills, things like that. Uh, but it's just a different dynamic and one's not going to be necessarily worse or better than the other But it's factors that you need to consider when you're selecting a running shoe is how it's going to change Your pronation or how your arch collapse what kind of support it provides on Impact but also on toe off so everyone's a bit different It's good to go to a run specialty shoe store and get fitted properly Make sure you're in the right size of shoe, but also the right type 
And a good run specialty shoe store employee should either watch you walk or run on a treadmill or outside or walking barefoot. You could do a test where you're walking and they should view you straight from behind to see how much your ankle, the inner, inner bulb part of your ankle, how much it collapses inward, how much your arch collapses inward, right? You could look at your arch type and say, oh, you have a really high rigid arch, you might need more of a, a neutral cushion type of shoe, or, oh, you know, you have a really flat foot, really low arch, it's okay to be in something that has more inherent stability. You know, issues with pronation, we all pronate a bit. If you pronate too much, if that's an excessive roll in and an excessive arch collapse, the problem with that is it puts torque on your knee, right? It radiates up through your leg on impact and you're looking at getting torque on that knee. You get torque on your knee, your knee collapses inward as well. Uh, you could get IT band issues. You could get knee pain. You could get hip issues, right? Everything's a biomechanical chain that could stem up uh, from that that landing of your foot. So the type of shoe matters, the type of your pronation matters. You could do stability drills and exercises. Coach Sandy on Running Wild to Believe has some ex excellent exercises for building strength to reduce excessive overpronation. At the same token, you might underpronate or supinate, uh, is what they call it, where you actually don't roll in enough and you're more on the outside edge of your heel and sometimes you even turn your ankle out uh, too much, especially if you're like trail running. So excessive supination sometimes could also be a problem. It's a little more rare, but uh, getting that dialed in with the proper type of shoe uh, is really important as well as recognizing your own biomechanical differences compared to someone else. So in summary, like I said, it's best to go to a run specialty shoe store, get fitted in person, get your form analyzed, film yourself straight head on, as well as also straight from behind, like the shots you saw, uh, what I had there, I just set the GoPro on the ground basically, uh, or you could use your phone probably, but you could watch it in slow motion and see how much that ankle turns in. Also do the wet paper test, the wet paper test to see your arch type. I've done a video on that, I'll link to that in the description below as well, uh, to kind of be realize what type of shoe might work better for your foot and usually it's also a comfort thing as soon as you try the shoe on in the shoe store uh, and walk around or run around in it you usually kind of know so take that uh, advice thank you so much for all your support on here thanks to the patreon supporters for really making these types of videos possible again we've got a whole playlist on running form there's going to be more but i've done a lot over the last decade so i want to be able to answer your questions and can't thank you enough for all your support here's to some happy more efficient faster running but also healthy running uh, thanks again for subscribing on here. It helps us out a lot. Thanks for checking out our uh, website, sagerunning.com. we got some free resources on there. Thumbs up if you like these types of videos. Thanks to the Patreon supporters again for making this possible. Hope your running's going well, and stay tuned for more.